Hey guys, this week's story is Mr. Linden's Library. This is in your my book on page 239. This is also a mystery, just like last week's story, The Secret Keepers. So go ahead and follow along in your my book. And if you'd like to take notes, that's a good idea as well. You wouldn't see anything special about Josiah Linden's house if you passed it on the road, which ran from town up to the small bluff that overlooked Allen's Bay. A scrawny oak tree, gnarled and twisted from years of catching the wind off the bay, sat in front, spoiling what symmetry the old house ever had. The backside of the house looked fairly formidable, especially the rounded corner that seemed for all the world like the turret of a small castle. There were some nights, however, when the moon was full, or nearly so, that the corner of the house would glow white against the darkness of the trees and shrubbery behind it and take on an eerie glow. Carol Jenkins didn't know much about Mr. Linden, except that he was one of the few black people in that area of Nova Scotia. The story about him, mostly gathered from the lips of people curious about the old man, or from American Revolutionary War buffs who knew that his ancestors could have been among the ex-slaves who had sided with British, was that Mr. Linden had been a merchant seaman most of his life. He wasn't a big man, and when he walked, he shifted his weight more from side to side than straight forward. He was lively, though, and always had a smile for whoever was passing, and a slight wave of the hand. The first time Carol remembered having seen Mr. Linden was in the hardware store, talking to a group of young men about weather conditions in the Arctic. The cold can catch you when you're not even thinking about it. It caught me about 30 years ago, and I lost a bit of my finger to frostbite, he had said holding up his hand so that the small crowd could see where the tip of the second finger of his left hand had been amputated. You must have been all over the world, one of the onlookers had remarked. The lure of seeing new places, different ways of life, has been almost irresistible, Mr. Linden had replied. Now I collect stories about those places pictures and books about the places I've been and places I'd still like to go someday. I have more than 2,000 books in my collection. Carol mentioned this story to her friend Peter, who dismissed the idea at once. Formidable. If something is formidable, it is a bit frightening, but also impressive because of its size or another special quality. John Altman was up to his place doing some repairs on the window frames, and he said it looked like the old guy read the same page of the same book every day. I bet he doesn't even know how to read. Carol didn't believe Peter, but decided not to make a big deal of it, and the matter would have gone completely from her mind if she and her mother hadn't run into Mr. Linden the following April. It was one of those days that the wind swirling relentlessly from the north, found every opening a poorly buttoned coat offered up and rattled the windows of Brendel's general store ominously against their frames. Mr. Linden was waiting while the clerk measured out a pound of coffee beans. Just the thought of a good hot cup of coffee makes me feel warmer, he said in the direction of Carol and her mother. Mr. Linden, do you think I could borrow one of your books one day? Carol's request surprised even her. Mr. Linden looked toward Carol's mother, his brows arched questioningly. Oh, that would be too much of a bother to you, sir, her mother said quickly. Books are meant to be read, Mr. Linden said. If you bring the young lady around, she can have her pick. I'm sure she'll be careful with them. The Glace Bay Library was small and didn't carry many of the adventure books that Carol liked. After she promised her mother that she did really want to expand her reading and would absolutely take care of the books, Carol and her mother made the short trek up the hill to Mr. Linden's house on a Wednesday afternoon. 